Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week it's time to start getting some paint onto this beetle. Hey guys, so after last week's um, suggestions, I put it out there to give the uh, the beetle and the other cars some names, and I finally come to a decision on the beetle. The um, this is no longer Project Beetle. It's it's now named John Lemon. It's a bit of a throwback to the Beatles and also a bit of a reference to the colour, at least the colour when I bought it, and um, and also maybe the uh, the amount of times it's left me stranded. So um, in any case, uh, it's not going to be staying yellow, but I think the name still fits, and that was a uh, that was a suggestion. The first suggestion was um, to call it Ringo. Again, you know, back to the uh, the Beatles reference, but uh, but I like the uh, the name the the name John Lemon. I think it's uh, it's quite creative and it's got a few uh, a few meanings there. So um, so first thing to get paint on John Lemon, I have to actually be able to get it in the booth, which means swapping cars around because the Datsun's in the booth, so I've got to move the Beetle out, the Datsun out, and swap around and let's get into it. Okay, that swapping around was much easier than I thought. Um, the Datsun is really light, so it wasn't too hard to push up the hill. I was, thought I was gonna have to get another car and tow it up, and it would have been a whole headache, but it was actually quite easy. So um, now it is time to go over the, the Beetle and give it its final sand ready for paint. So that means going over everything and sanding all of the edges to get it exactly the way I want it before I can paint it. All right, next step is um, now I've finally got this in the garage where I need it. I can take the steering wheel off and um, and sort of move this column out of the way, whether I can just, uh, I'm hoping I can just sort of move it down out of the way, get it out of the way enough so that I can just paint around it and put it back without actually removing everything. But um, we'll see what, what it takes. In any case, uh, let's get this steering wheel off, which is usually a matter of undoing the large knot in the middle and they sit on with splines and they're quite difficult to just sort of pull off but it helps if you rock the steering wheel backwards and forwards and often you can sort of break the uh, the tension on the uh, on the spine and just pull it towards you and just hopefully not smash it up in the face with the steering wheel. Well, that was one of the easiest steering wheels I've ever pulled off. Normally they get quite stuck and they take quite a bit of uh, wrestling, but this came off quite easily. But um, yes, uh, if anybody wants this uh, hideous thing, contact me. But uh, yeah, time to keep stripping this and uh, get it ready for paint. Okay, that was a lot more work than I was expecting, but I've now gone over and sanded down everything. I'm happy that it's all rubbed back and it is ready to go. So now it's time to uh, blow it off and give it a good clean up before I move it in the booth and then um, I'd have to start masking it. All right, so the outside is masked up and uh, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. But now the challenging part is gonna be masking up the sort of the back of this interior and 
what I do want to paint in here and then balance that with what I don't want to paint. So I've got to mask up this roof lining and down the sides of these doors and mask sort of across here, but I'm still going to paint this edge of the door frame and the pillars and then you know down under I've got to mask up the uh, the steering column here. This bottom end, um, while I'm here, I want to give it a, a coat of black, even though most it's all going to be pretty much covered by carpet. I'll cover it all up, still get it so that I can paint the colour inside the dash. So that's my plan. So uh, more masking and see how I can work it out. happy with that the dash and the inside is masked up I've uh, I've left this sort of area at the front of the floor I can just sort of put the primer where I want it and um, yeah the rest I can give a coat of black later on the last things to do is to mask up the engine bay and the wheels and then we can do our last thorough clean all right everything else is masked up on the car the last thing I'm going to do is these wheels and the way I like to do it is um, basically I make up some wheel bags and with a masking machine it's really easy so basically what I do is I'll grab I grab a nice long length of paper like this and then I fold it in half sticking the tape edges together like so and I have it's a big pocket and I just sit that over the wheel like so and then just tape around the edges and we're done and do that four times and uh, we have four wheel bags so let's start making wheel bags. All right, as always, that took way longer than I expected, but the entire car is masked up. Um, so it is finally time to give it the final clean, go over everything, get it nice and clean and tidy. So then I can finally put some primer on it. All right, all cleaned up, finally ready to go. Time to mix up some paint and get some primer on this car. Yeah, finally. Primer's on, and just after naming it John Lemon, it is no longer yellow. But um, in any case, that is definitely a wrap for today, which means it's uh, time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 1959 saw the first Australian-made body panels for the transporters. The first Australian-made exports were also done this year, with locally-made Beatles being shipped overseas to my home country of New Zealand. Some promotional floating Volkswagens were also seen, with modified Beetles being piloted up the Swan River in Perth, and these Volkswagen were also seen in Victoria on the Murray River and in Sydney Harbour. Interestingly, these Beetles had little modification beyond masking tape, heavy grease on the door rubbers, a 45 centimetre extension on the distributor shaft, an exhaust, and a snorkel on the carburetor. 1959 also saw the introduction of the fully imported Carmen gear with the initial cars being converted at the factory in Australia to right-hand drive. All right, guys. So as I said, after finally naming the car John Lemon, it is no longer yellow, but... Um, you, it... you didn't tell me you'd chosen that. I didn't. But I really like that. That's a great choice. I love it. It's got the, the, the Beatles reference. It's, yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it's quite well relevant. 
So, um, and also the fact that sort of stranded Mrs. Jeff on the side of the road. So it's, the lemon thing sort of oh, yes, has yes. has lots of meanings, which is what yeah. I like. So we still need Simulated. names for the other cards. Okay. But uh, in any way, uh, in any case, that's it for this week. Um, next week, uh, I've got more panels to paint, and hopefully, I can even get some of the white bits done on this car. But um, as always, uh, if you want to help the channel out, head down to the link in the description, and you can get some shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, all that sort of stuff. And um, please like and subscribe to Home Built by Jeff, and uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Bye, See guys. You guys. Words. It's just words. Swaggins so are also seen with Volts, Boats, Boats, Varg, Modified Beetles. A few modifications beyond masking tape. What? Well, I don't know. Factory what? Being converted after factory, at the factory. <laughs>